Welcome back, folks. This teaching is going to be specifically dealing with trading the key swing points. Okay, so what swing points are we going to be teaching in this module? We're going to be revisiting the Asian Open, the London Open, the New York Open, and the London Close. All right, so engineering the daily range. Now, obviously, I teach with Power 3 that the general rule of thumb is that Asia is a consolidation, then London creates the high or the low of the daily range. New York is part of the expansion, and then London close creates the higher low of the day or the opposite end of the range that's formed in London. But not always is that the case. In some instances, the Asian open will create the daily high or low. As seen here in this example, the low of the day is formed during the Asian open, and then the highest formed in the London session. Conversely, like as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a typical power three scenario where we have consolidation in Asia. Then when it's bullish, we create the low of the day and then it expands throughout the rest of the day. Now London open, it can create obviously as I teach with power three, it can create the low or high of the day. In this example here, you can see the London session creates the very low, lower than it was at the beginning of the trading in Asia. Or London can be part of a retracement when the Asian session creates the low of the day. So the way we're going to use this information is if Asia creates a low or high of the day, in this example, it creates a low and starts to run and expands outside of the Asian range. This drop down in London is typically going to be a retracement of the initial leg or impulse leg of the intraday move. If we're bullish, we're going to assume that Asia creates the low and we're retracing down into what would be optimal trade entry. And that could be a long. So London open can be a part of the move that occurs and originates from the Asian open. Now the New York open, this too can create the higher low of the daily range as well. As you can see, there's an example of the market staying in a consolidation drops down and we'd have to assume that we would be bearish this particular day. But there may be a big news event that comes out and it creates a run on liquidity. And we can see that run of all these equal highs here, creating the New York open raid on liquidity that makes the high of the day and the market trades lower as a result. Equally significant, we can see the New York open can be part of a retracement from the London open. Here we see the low formed in London creates an impulse swing, trades back down into the New York open, creates a nice retracement and then rallies creating the high of the day later on during the New York and overlap of London close. So both scenarios, this is the classic scenario. This is what I teach and have taught for years. This is the easiest setup when we want to trade the New York open. So the swing point that takes place here We'd have to assume that we're bullish beforehand, and then the low has to be formed and shows a clear impulse swing during the London session, then retraces during the London lunch going into New York open. We can see the turning point here or swing point that would be traded rather handsomely. Now, this is a, a, a bullish scenario. It would just as equally effective if it was. Uh, London creating a high today, it trades lower during the low London session, then retraces up into New York session, creating a retracement, which is a classic continuation on the bearish idea or down close premise for the daily range for your particular market and expansion going towards London close. So everything we're showing here just can be done in reverse. Okay, the London close. Now, this can be the high or low of the day. Uh, typically, if we're bullish and London's created the low of the day or Asia's created the low of the day, uh, London close tends to be the opposite end of the range. Now, it doesn't always close the high end or low end of the range, but generally, as a rule of thumb, I believe that it'll serve you well. Other instances, it can create the high of the day when it's been in a range bound. As we can see here, the market was in a large consolidation. We had equal highs. Market runs up during London 
close, takes those highs, and creates the actual high of the day and trades lower. This could be done in reverse. This could have easily been equal lows down here, and it could have eventually drove down to get the equal lows and making the low of the day. And or it can be a reversal point from a longer term perspective. As we see here, the market had been trading higher during the London close time period. During the London close time period, the market makes a reversal on a Friday. Next week, the following week, it opens, trades in consolidation, begins to move lower, and moves significantly lower on the following week's Tuesday. So it can act as a reversal. Now, how do you use these swing points? You want to be using higher time frame price levels. And when these specific key swing points or time of day overlap with higher time frame levels, you can anticipate what would be otherwise expected on a higher time frame. For instance, if we had a key resistance level that we were watching on a daily time frame, if we came to this level in mind, and we're going to speak hypothetically here, because there's so many examples, I could literally make a five to six hour long video and I wouldn't even scratch the surface, which is the reason I have to have a mentorship because there's so many types of conditions and setups that are available. Not that you need to know every single one of them, but it makes you very versatile as a trader because you can see things in the marketplace that aren't going to surprise you. You can anticipate them and wait for them to come in. But if we're looking for a key resistance level in the daily chart, that could be the time of day when London trades up to that key resistance point and at the time of the day when it trades there you could be a seller at London close even while the day was bullish because it's hitting that higher time frame daily resistance price point that could be the point in which it's best to sell short and that would be a scenario and the same thing would be applied to all of these key swing points or time of day because we have characteristics that have been shown here and we also went beyond what was typically taught as my ICT Power 3. There's some blending of the rules, and I've given you generic characteristics, if you will, for each of the four major key swing points. So I want you to go through your charts and pull up a 15-minute time frame, or it could be a 30-minute time frame. And I want you to look at all the times that the market turns and creates significant daily highs and lows, and when it makes intra-week and weekly highs and lows. And... Look at the monthly highs and lows. When are they forming? And you'll be able to see a storyline over time studying it in reference to the higher time frame key support resistance levels that you would otherwise look for. When these time periods or key swing points trade to them, you will see significant and high probability turning points. Hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. Obviously, if you want to find more, you can visit my website at theinnercircletrader.com.